the first 100 day deadline or the first 100 day uh, experience of, of a new president was really sort of an artificial thing that was set back in the Depression era when Franklin Roosevelt came into office. He did so much during that first 100 days and he focused on trying to get uh, people back on a footing. I mean it was really, really desperate times. The economy's bad now, but you had former middle class, upper class families literally living on the street. So he closed the banks, he did all sorts of things, and that 100-day standard uh, became the yardstick by which every succeeding president has been measured. What did they accomplish in their first 100 days? I think, personally, the 100-day deadline is artificial. I think that rather than saying we have to accomplish X, Y, and Z within 100 days, you should say this is our long-term plan. What are the issues? What are the problems? How are they being addressed? That, that's really, that, that's the yardstick. It, it's not length of time, but what's the quality of the... Uh, in the next four years, there are several, I think, major issues on the table. Um, climate change hasn't been discussed at all. And whether you want to believe in climate change, and which is also, of course, known as global warming, there is no doubt, there is no doubt that um, weather has gotten weirder over the past decade, after, actually the past two decades. Um, and besides weather patterns, oceans are rising. We have got to be serious about how we address, you know, uh, the way our cities are built, the way our, home, our towns are built. How many times is New Orleans going to flood? Any coastal town cannot reasonably expect the, the houses to be perched 30 yards from the ocean and last forever. It's, you know, the, this is serious stuff. And it affects insurance rates. It affects, you know, home buying. It affects, you know, uh, demographics in certain areas. I mean, it just affects the economy. Absolutely, you know. And, and when we talk about the economy, we're talking about trade with other countries. We're talking about, yeah, tax policy. You know, what's the best way? Do you raise taxes? Do you lower taxes? But I think that, you know, with the economy, it, I, I'm so tired of the term job creators. Um, I'm also tired of the fact that both sides, when I say both sides, I mean Democrats and Republicans talk about, I will create this many jobs. I also think we need to have a, um, a serious, serious look at our farm bill. Um, every few years we have this massive farm bill that's passed and it's something that most people don't think about because you know so few people relatively speaking are in agriculture at least. In agriculture. Well, you know, energy policy, agricultural policy, the economy, all these things are intertwined and I think that we, we've had leaders who have made each of these items uh, compartmentalized and they've also politicized them, so it, they're not being th thought of holistically, and we're not seeing a big picture of what's good for, for this nation. Um, a lot of people have been put out of work, but you know, some of that's industrialization. And we have way too many low-skilled workers who just are being left behind, just completely left behind. So I, I do believe in education, but I also believe in, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a Democrat thing, I don't think it's a Republican thing, there's some personal responsibility. If you get a Pell Grant to go to a technical community college or some other training program and you waste your time or have bad grades or don't show up half the time, okay, fine, we're taking your money back. So uh, economy, immigration, the farm bill, food supply, uh, clean air, balance that with energy policy. I think those are the big things. And uh, finally, um, actually not finally, I have two more things. Uh, the first of those is I really worry about our infrastructure. We have a lot of bridges in this country that are deteriorating and they're deteriorating fast. And I think that not enough energy has been put into that. We're building all sorts of new roads, new neighborhoods, but we're not fixing what we have. And uh, the last one I need to mention is, is defense. Um, 
We need to have reasonable military policies. It's a cliche to say both sides need to sit down and talk to each other, but it really, really is getting kind of scary with the extremes we have in Congress. Far left, far right, Tea Party versus, you know, whoever. That's not the way to run a government. It's not the way to run a country. Um, and I, you know, you may personally be against someone who is not religious and who is gay or vice or or who one or the other maybe you're a churchgoer and vice versa if you're an atheist and you you've got to think about religious people or you know whatever we all do live in this country together and so there's not enough acceptance of, of, of our neighbor and it's Pollyannish maybe to talk about this but you know, the government does set the tone. And so if you've got members of Congress, for example, running out there, or the president running out there and saying the other side is horrible, the other side is stupid, the other side is, is you know, uh, trying to destroy America, you know, which is some of the rhetoric that has been used, then you're going to have bloggers and, and everybody else blow up the internet and, and send out messages and you're going to have a few crazies who act on that. So uh, I, th those are the issues that are going to have to be tackled and they're not going to be tackled in 100 days.